you may be aware that very recently a new paper was published that made some pretty major changes to the way we classify dinosaurs. This video will hopefully be able to quickly summarise what these changes are and how they affect our views on dinosaurs as we move forwards. The standard way to classify the major dinosaur groups has been relatively unchanged for 130 years. Before this new study, dinosaurs had been split into two main orders, or clades. One of these clades were the Saurischians, and included the mostly carnivorous theropods, as well as the sauropods. The other main clade was the Ornithischians, which contained the Ceratopsians, Ankylosaurs, Stegosaurs, Ornithopods, as well as others. The two groups were arranged based on the differences between their hip bones, and the distinction seemed clear enough to create these clades. However, this new paper re-examined many features of the early members of the dinosaur groups, and has produced a very different relationship between the dinosaur lineages. One of the most notable changes is the shift of placement for the theropods. Instead of being classified as Saurischians with the sauropods, this clade has now been moved closer to the Ornithischians, forming a new clade called Ornithoscelida. As well as this, a problematic group known as the Hererosaurs, which had previously been classified as theropods, are now thought to no longer be theropods, but more closely related to the sauropods. Therefore, in the new classification, the Hererosaurs and sauropods make up the newly defined Saurischia, instead of the sauropods and theropods as it was before. This new arrangement certainly makes Hererosaurs a lot more interesting, since it would imply that carnivory and the similar body plan of herarosaurs and theropods actually evolved twice within dinosaurs. This would be an example of convergent evolution, in which two unrelated animals evolved similar traits. Under this new classification, it would also seem to suggest that, since we only have evidence of feathers from theropods and ornithischians, that feathers might not have been present on sauropods or herarosaurs at all, now that they are more distantly related and that perhaps feathers only evolved in the Ornithoscelida group. However, a new discovery could completely change this and show that feathers were indeed present in Sauriskins, so for now it's probably best not to assume anything concerning feather distribution throughout dinosaur clades. Support for this new classification is fairly good, especially since a lot of early Ornithischians do look quite theropod-like and the many shared features of theropods and ornithischians that the authors list in the paper look to be good evidence. But there are, of course, some problems with this new idea. Although the evidence looks good, to get a more accurate family tree would require more fossils and more discoveries of early dinosaurs, and with them, more characteristics that could be assessed. As well as this, a major criticism of the study is the problem of skeletal pneumaticity, the presence of spaces filled with air inside the bones of an animal, known as skeletal pneumaticity, is non-existent in ornithischians, but present in theropods and sauropods. In the old definition of saurischia, this would have made more sense, since pneumaticity could have evolved in the common ancestor of sauropodomorphs and theropods, but never evolved in the unrelated ornithischians. But now, with theropods and ornithischians together, it becomes more complicated, since there are two unrelated pneumatic clades on either side of a clade that lacks pneumaticity. Perhaps ornithischians were in fact pneumatic, and this is something that paleontologists have missed when studying their fossils, or maybe this is another example of convergent evolution, with pneumaticity appearing twice in the dinosaur family. But for the moment, this is problematic to the new reorganisation. In summary, this study drastically changes the way in which we look at dinosaurs, as it shows that even some of the seemingly most well-founded ideas can be overturned by a fresh look and new data. However, the dinosaur family tree almost certainly will change again once new evidence is found, but for the moment this hypothesis seems to be fairly well supported with the information currently available. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and that now you have a better idea of the dramatic changes being made to our understanding of dinosaur evolution. Remember to subscribe to my channel to see more of my videos, and you can also follow me on social media.